In honor of Jackson State's homecoming week, I figured this would be the perfect time to release this segment. You saw the thumbnail. You've seen the title. You know why we're here. I'm going to attempt for the next 30 minutes to try and explain one of the most historic HBCU musical programs in the nation. This is the birthplace of some of the most iconic arrangers and creative minds of all time. And while this segment may not catch every single aspect of JSU's history, and for that next undergraduate music major that's watching this, you will have more than enough to help you decide whether or not you want to be a part of its greatness. The choice is yours. This is the history and sound of the sonic boom of the South. Now it's said that the music program started around the 1920s where the great legendary Frederick D. Hall was responsible for bringing the concept of the music program to JSU. Now at the time, it was known as Jackson State College and it was made up of mostly students from Lanier High School and Jackson State College. Now, F.D. Hall covered multiple phases of the music program, from orchestra to chorus. However, the marching aspect of Jackson State College had not been formed yet, but it was well on its way. Now, F.D. Hall was also one of the most educated musical minds of all time. He received his B.A. from Morehouse College, a teacher's diploma and master's from Chicago Musical College, he also received a master's in education from Columbia University, and he received an honorary doctorate from Rust College in Mississippi. Now, as the marching band began to take shape, it wasn't until JSU great Kermit Holly Sr. came in as director of bands around 1947, replacing F.D. Hall. Now, it's said that Kermit Holly was actually the band director for Lanier High School, and he also was director of band for Jackson State College as well at the same time talking about the hustle. Now, Kermit Holly received his education from Clark College out in Atlanta, Georgia. He received his master's degree in music from Chicago Music College in Chicago, Illinois. And for 30 years, he led the Lanier High School Marching Band. And remember, they were joint. So Lanier High School Marching Band and Jackson State College were kind of merged as one. Now, for him to run two different bands, they proved to be a little bit of a problem as he considered Lanier High School his baby. So it would be sometimes where Jackson State College did not have a director of band present while he was running operations at the high school. Now, while teaching in Jackson, it said that he actually started a quartet, which traveled throughout the North and Midwest to raise funds for the college. Now, for a brief stint in 1947, it said that Charles Salzburg also stepped in as director of band and to be honest i can't really find a lot of information on charles but i'm sure that he has a family and that he was a great musician and he has a legacy out there somewhere unfortunately i'm just not able to find it now i said that charles only led for one year from 1947 to 1948 then came the great william w davis also known as prof and by this time the jsu marching band was officially initiated in the year 1948 now professor davis gained his music skill from the military he was also known for his amazing trumpet skills he was an arranger for an orchestra called the cab calloway and he brought all of that musical genius over to jackson state between the amazing arrangements from Professor Davis and with Dr. Dolly E. Robinson holding down the field shows as the assistant director of bands, the Jackson State University Marching Band was really coming into its own. Now, I typically only cover director of bands in these segments, but it said that Dr. Dolly as an assistant was a huge staple piece in the band's program and that she would go on to do amazing things for the university. Now, it's also said that during this time, that the band did not accept anyone that did not meet the national standard for bandmanship. Which means that even though they were a very small school and didn't have a lot of resources, they still set the bar really high for musicians who wanted to come in and be a part of what they were building over at Jackson State. It's said to have been a jazz band with a huge sound. Now, Prof received his Bachelor's of Science degree in Music and Education from Alabama State University and was rewarded his Master's of Art degree from The Ohio State University. Professor Davis was also responsible for carrying the first symphonic band to New York for his first somewhat national exposure. He was known for being a beast with the pen. Sometimes he didn't even realize how good he was. Some argue the greatest 
pen of all time in the history of the Jackson State Music Program. That's how good he was, truly ahead of his time. According to an interview with Mr. Harold, he said that once Quincy Jones was inquiring about Professor Davis, as he had some of the greatest musical scores and arrangements that he had ever heard. That's crazy. As for the band, they were known for being a small band with a big sound or jazz sound. There's a story that he didn't want the band to actually go past 72 members until some of his staff members convinced him otherwise. In short, Professor Davis was a beast sometimes having three and four part harmonies for one instrument and he was also very influential to many musicians under him and directors that came under his tutelage which brings me to the next director the legendary harold halton senior put on your seatbelt it's about to get interesting so just for some fun harold said that he grew up in new orleans louisiana and he figured that he would either go to southern university or grambling but he said once his family went out to mississippi and he heard jackson state play he was amazed by the sound he knew then that that's where he needed to be at jackson state now harold halton took over the school somewhere between 1971 1974 not real clear on the exact time but prior to that in the 60s Harold served as the assistant director of band to professor davis and prior to that he was a high school band director in the state of alabama Here's another fun fact. So Harold actually left Jackson State for a small stint and went over to Prairie View, which is Jackson State's swag rival, to be an assistant director of band. Talking about messing with history, and you're going to find out why. Stay tuned. If Harold had not went back to Jackson State, let's just say that this conversation probably wouldn't be happening because we don't know what the boom would be had he not stayed. Honestly, the program as we know it to this day probably wouldn't exist with all this rich history and swag. But you know, sometimes you plan the seed someone else has to water it and you germinate in your own time such was the case with harold now once he left pv and came back to jackson state his alma mater it's said to be around the 1970s after spending assistant director of band at both schools he came back to jsu as the director of bands you see, the reason why I'm saying this is because they say that Mr. Harold was responsible for making, making some drastic changes to the overall music program once he took over. He's always had a creative mind. As he said in an interview once, he would spend a lot of his time designing drills for the band. He also said he never really understood why, but this great sound, why they never drilled like Ohio State or Michigan. They had the sound, they had the talent, but it was something missing. Mr. Harold came in, guns blazing, ready to make change and stamp his name in the history and legacy of the Jackson State Sonic Boom of the South, which to this point, the Sonic Boom of the South, as you know it, had not existed yet. Harold shared a story about how some of the students at Jackson State said that Southern University had embarrassed him the previous year before he came. He said he met with all the section leaders and asked them to trust him. And at that point, it's when he began to install patterns and motions and the rest is history. Here's a list of the changes that Harold made to the marching band. First and foremost, the most important thing is the name birth. As we know it to this day, the Sonic Boom of the South was not invented yet until Harold and a few students decided to make change. According to Harold himself, he said that the inspiration came from Texas Southern Ocean of Soul. He loved that people saw them as the ocean, so he wanted the same for his program. In my personal opinion, I feel like Harold didn't think JSU had quite enough swag, and he wanted to change that. His process was to allow the students to choose out of a group of names and 80% of the student body at that time picked the sonic boom of the South. Crazy moment, but I'm not done yet. He also invented the Tiger Run On. It said that this came about from students goofing off at practice. And it was at that moment that Harold had an epiphany. The rest is history. The floating JSU block letters that you see doing field drills from JSU, that's Harold. Replacing the major rest with featured dancers, that's Harold. The Tiger Strut, that's Harold. Increasing the band size to 160 members, that's Harold. He also brought them on national stages by getting the band on televised NFL games. It said that he was the first to do it. He also brought in the high knee lifts known as the Moppet style of marching. The band theme, Get Ready, was made a tradition. And finally, those complex drills and designs that you see today, Harold did. I mean, the list goes on. Now, could you imagine if JSU decided to let him stay at PV? Man, this conversation would be completely different. Harold actually left JSU in 1984 to become director of bands at Virginia State University. Since Harold was responsible for so many changes and greatness throughout the history of JSU band, you would have to imagine he inspired many great students out of that lineage, one of which was the great director, Dow Taylor. 
Nadal did graduate from JSU. He was one who believed that your hard work and dedication would definitely pay off, as he certainly earned his respect amongst the ranks of the JSU arrangers and directors of bands. It's said that he arranged over 100 plus selections as an undergraduate student, one of which we all know and love today, the famous Get Ready. He earned the reward for the best all-around bandsman in 1975. Here's a list of Dow's musical accolades. After graduating from Jackson State with his bachelor's and master's in music, where he actually was a tuba player in the Sonic Boom, he took over as director of bands over at Kentucky State University. He served there for about eight years. His last year at KSU, he actually served as department chair. That's when he got the call from Jackson State to come home. I love the common theme between a lot of these universities as I study the history. They have somewhat of a level of loyalty, sometimes. Now, in Dow Taylor's own words, this call home was one that he could not ignore. Now, this was in 1984, where he came in and continued to build upon the successes of Harold Halton Sr. He brought the band more national spotlight by being added to the Christian Science Monitor, the Jet Magazine, and the People Magazine. Now, in 1992, the great legendary Dow Taylor was said to have retired from the band program and started a music technology program at Jackson State, which was an undergraduate program that eventually received accreditation from the accreditation agency known as NASM. For those who don't know, that is the National Association of Schools of Music. I mean, excuse my French, but damn. Now, Mr. Dow Taylor retired in 1992, but came back a few times as interim. During his time, his former director, the great and legendary Dr. Lewis Liddell took over the boom, and it's said that Dr. Liddell and Mr. Taylor were friends who had crossed paths several times throughout their career. Now, Dr. Lewis Liddell also graduated from Jackson State. I'm not sure if you're catching a trend here, but Jackson State is really starting to build from within. He obtained his doctorate from Mississippi State University. He studied conducting under William W. Davis and marching band techniques from Dr. William C. Moffat. He served in major positions for multiple institutions such as assistant chair to deans and other musical programs. I wouldn't have time to explain Dr. Liddell's full resume. It's insanely long and very impressive. The most impressive I've seen, to be honest. He took the band to appear in the NCAA 34th Image Award Show, where Cedric the Entertainer performed with the band. They were also featured in video games, marching the Hundle Battle of the Bands, and was enshrined in the NCAA Hall of Fame. In 2000, Dr. L Dr. Liddell changed the drum majors from the Fabulous Four to the world famous Jackson 5 or J5 to which they're most famously known for to this day. Now it's said that he was intense and gave the band a real competitive edge during his tenure. Dr. Liddell retired from the band program in 2016. Now from here JSU has had a wholesome interim directors who came through those hollow halls. One of which is former director of bands at Alcorn State Dr. Ronaldo Murray who stepped in as interim for a brief stint and then came the JSU legends Edward Duplessis and O'Neill Sanford who in his own Wright has garnished and made a household name amongst the marching ranks as a director of bands for several institutions. He became a music educator in 1965 and served at Sevier High School, Mississippi Valley, Virginia State University, University of Minnesota, University of Pittsburgh, Norfolk State University. I mean, the list goes on. He earned his Bachelor's of Science in Music degree from Southern University and a Master's from Vandercook College. He also received an honorary doctorate from Conservatory of Music, Mexico City, Mexico. This guy's been all over the world. Honestly, the JSU Sonic Boom of the South is literally a machine built to last and run on autopilot through the years. Although they've seen many directors, I feel like Dow Taylor was like the glue over the most recent years, keeping the core of the Sonic Boom of the South that was established in the 1940s up into this current day, including piloting a program to separate director of band from a marching band director, which is interesting in its own right, to keep the everyday band duties separate from the actual marching band activities. Not sure if this is still in place today, but it is a part of their history, which would make sense as to why JSU has the sound that they have if staff was only focusing on their job as the marching band director and not the mundane day-to-day -day activities that a director should take care of. I mean, that's genius. He set the tone for what's witnessed for the current version of the boom today. Speaking of current day, let's speak about Dr. Roderick Little, the current director of bands 
or the Sonic Boom of the South. Came in as one of the youngest band directors in HBCU history. He took over the boom in the summer of 2020. It's said that he is to be a Jackson, Mississippi musical great. He was born in Jackson where he was trained in music at six years old by his family. He went to high school at Lanier High in Mississippi. He was granted a full scholarship as a percussionist. Shout out to my percussionists out there. Where he decided to attend, of course, Jackson State University. He eventually got his bachelor's in 2007 and master's in 2011 and his doctorate in higher education administration in 2019. After graduating, he went back to his old alma mater and led Lanier High School to receive superior level ratings at marching concert festivals. I mean, this guy has Mississippi in his blood. Hell, he is Mississippi. Dr. Little is known for being a percussionist and arranger and great at being relatable to the students as he is a young fiery director himself. He also started several outreach programs, which included, but are not limited to, the summer high school band camp and a day with the boom, both which act as major major recruitment agents for the Department of Music, grossing over 400 to 600 students collectively annually. He started the public media relations of the Sonic Boom with implementation of the Sonic Boom media team and strengthened their social media platforms. Most importantly, he improved the inner workings of the overall operations of the entire JSU band's program. I mean, with the coming of Coach Prime and Dr. Little, JSU is a hot spot for recruiting right now. And like I said before, they have a high level of expectations for their musicians and the standard is set really high and honestly it's a great time to be alive to witness the evolution of the musical band programs rise again let's enjoy it this has been the history and sound of the sonic boom of the south Meditating my silence But I keep pushing my pen Rotating my stylus Brokenness feeling like sin Now no breath, low dollar Used to be left on red Now all the girls go high